Hi folks, now we have had one of these and we give it to our daughter, but them nice people at Kasori have sent us this one to do a personal review for you lot so that we can see what this Kasori Dual Blaze Air Fryer, Sharon, yes. is all about. Okay, we've magically transported to a different kitchen now, folks. We're up in Scotland at the moment. We've got the uh, Kasori Dual Blaze here. Let's have a little closer look at it and tell you a bit more about it. So this is the uh, air fryer in question. It's got 12 different functions on it. It's a 6.4 litre, very large tray, Sharon, isn't it? Lovely big tray. And uh, obviously in the bottom there, you've got the, uh, the crisp bake tray on this one. There, and a lot of people use these for baking, which are very good for baking. Now this tin, Sharon, how, how, what size is that one? That's a seven inch sponge tray. Right, okay. And that literally falls in there, as you can see, folks. And the beauty of uh, baking cakes in here is you've got the dual elements. You can see in the bottom there, you've got the element on the bottom. And like conventional air fryers, you've also got the element on the top there. And both elements combine to 1700 watts. And on here, let's just turn this unit on. Again, all touch sensitive. You've got a very simple keypad here. You've got 12 different functions, as I said to you. So the thing with this one, as I say, it's got the two heating elements. You also get a cookbook with it, and the bottom element gives you the opportunity not to have to shake it, Sharon, doesn't it? Yeah, no shaking. No shaking one. with this because it's heating from below. There's app control on it, so you don't actually have to preheat this one. The app control, can you, where's your phone, Sharon? Let's see. Means you can actually latch up to uh, an app which you can download on either the Play Store or the uh, which is Amazon store, which is the V-Sync app there. you do with the barcode that comes in your cookbook and the box that it arrives Right, and on. what are you able to do with that? Well, you've got recipes on there as well. Okay, the phone screen's a bit flickery at the moment, folks. So start cooking. So you start cooking, you can move your temperature up and down. There's all your settings up there. All your presets are on there. And if I press cook now, as you can see, you just press cook now. And now. But it won't start the cooking right. itself. You have to press the start for that so that just means that you can't accidentally turn it on and have it running so all you do is you press the start button the unit will fire up and as and you can you see go. there i know the screen's flickering folks there you go that might be better and it shows you exactly what you're reading on there so you can go into a different room now and you can monitor your cooking there and see how far you've got to go on that you can also alter the settings on the fly as well so you can stop the cooking There we go, and that's actually just turned it off. So you can actually switch it off remotely as well, which is a very handy feature if you're upstairs in the house or you're in the garden or whatever, mm -hmm. and this latches up, as I say, to your Wi-Fi password. Right, so as I said to you, we've got different functions on here. So you've got the preset for chicken there, which is 200 degrees centigrade for 20 minutes. Veggies, 195 for six minutes. Steak, fries, seafood, and frozen. Now those are very handy if you've got absolutely no idea of your yeah. temperatures. That's your guidelines, your benchmark sort of thing. So it gives you a starting point to know roughly where to put the, uh, the, the temperature settings. And you've also got, as I say, the basic air fry setting, which is 180 degrees at 10 minutes. You do have a keep warm function, which means if you've cooked your food, it will operate at 80 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes and just keep stuff warm. You can increase these times and temperatures if you want. You've got a roast setting and you've also got a broil setting. Now with the broil setting, that is basically a grill setting. In other words, you won't be activating the lower element on the broil setting. Broil just brings in the top element up there and that allows you to then just grill or whatever. In other words, that's just a normal air fryer basically. So. Uh, so there you go, that's the basic settings on how it works. There's your power switch there. And as I say, that little Wi-Fi signal there shows that we've actually got Wi-Fi connection with this, with your phone share, yeah. haven't we? On the back of the unit, if we just pull it round there, phone. that's your vents there where the uh, hot air comes out. So it's uh, recommended that you keep that away from the wall uh, a good few inches just so that you're not burning anything at the back there. And uh, also it stops condensation going up your unit as well. So our daughter and her family have been enjoying this one for a good few months now, mm -hmm. and they use it every day. And like everybody else who leaves comments on our videos, the main cooker and the main oven is basically redundant now. So we're gonna be enjoying our one when we get back home. But until then, we're gonna start cooking something in here for you just to show you uh, what we can cook in here. We're going to try and do some budget meals, Sharon. We're going to do a budget dinner for my grandchildren today. Yeah, we've been out shopping today. Let's have a look what we've bought. 
Right, so how much do these cost? How much do the sprouts cost? They cost me 34 pence. The two potatoes? 58 pence. The carrots? 25 pence. Cauliflower? That's a cabbage, 70 pence. And also the chicken? pound fifty. Right, okay, folks, there we go. So that's what we're going to be cooking in the Kasori Dual Blaze today. 6.4 litre, 1700 watt element with 12 different cooking functions. Right, so these are the chicken pieces we got, folks. Very good value for money. Nice, chunky little thighs there. So but, all Sharon's going to do is just literally lightly oil them. So we're just literally just lightly coating the uh, surface of this chicken with some olive oil. Right, so let's open this drawer up and let's put these in there. We are not using the liner in this case, but you can buy liners, folks, to go in there. And love, three lovely size of uh, thighs there, or legs or whatever, Sharon for £1.50, said. that's a very good buy. Yeah, all them just cost £1.50, folks. And they fit in there an absolute treat. So we're just going to uh, season these uh, skins up with some uh, salt and pepper there. There you go. And we'll be putting them in here, in the air fryer. And this is the beauty of it, just turn it on. And we're using chicken, so we could use the preset there for 200 degrees at 20 minutes. And don't forget, Shell, that will bring both elements on, won't it? So yeah. there's no need to turn these over, folks. So we're just gonna hit the play button. And we're gonna let that do its own thing now for 20 minutes. Happy days. Right, so Sharon's just going to prepare the vegetables and then we'll come back to you when we're ready to deal with them, baby, yeah? Yep. Brilliant, okay. See you in a minute, folks. So these are going to be roast potatoes, folks. We're just going to cube them up and cut them into quarters just to give a nice chunky roast potato. We'll do some roasted carrots as well. Yeah, we're going to roast the carrots. So they'll be done, well, everything's going to be done. Except uh, the cabbage and sprouts. Yeah, uh, all the root vegetables are going to be done in the air fryer. So final thing to do is just literally shred up the cabbage. So all that will go in a saucepan and also the uh, carrots, as you know, are gonna be roasted and also the potatoes. Can we just have a look at your app now? Just have a look on your phone. Oh. Right, so we just come into a separate room, folks, and as you can see down here, if we touch that bit there, there's our chicken. It's got uh, 13 minutes left to run. So we can leave that there. And if we wanted to stop cooking because we had to go and do something else now, we could just press the stop cooking button there and that would turn the air fryer off. And if we wanted to resume it later, then we can come back and resume it. But obviously, you'd have to be in the room to resume it because you need to press the start button as a safety feature of you actually being there so it can't automatically turn itself off. Right, so we've got the sprouts in there and we've got the uh, cabbage. Sharon just put some water in there and we're just going to put them on, on the gas hob and we'll just leave that ticking over low yeah, we've got the roast potatoes there when that's done. Yep, so we'll wait for that. We're actually preparing this meal ahead of time because the children aren't home from school yet and when it comes in, we can put it on the keep warm function and then do it then. But we're going to cook all this up beforehand so you can see how it looks in this dual blaze. Right, so the air fire's been on for a good few minutes now. We've only got nine minutes to go, folks. It's cooking inside there at 200 degrees and I can put my hands all over the air fryer, as you can see, the elements in the top and the elements in the bottom uh, are obviously both on, but I can put my hands on that. It's no massive heat there at all, so there's no real worry of you burning yourself with this uh, air fryer. And if you come around the back, the heat is actually blowing out there. It's warm, but it's not hot where it can scold you. As you can see, I'm holding my hand right next to it there. But just to be aware that that's where the heat does come out of and exits via the fans at the top there. There are intake grills along the top there where the air is probably sucked in. So that's why you really want a nice, well, it fits under a worktop pretty nicely, a standard worktop hype. So uh, yeah, just to be aware of, that's the um, output for the, the hot air, so to speak. So with the little up and down arrows there, you haven't got to worry about having to change like a function button. You can actually increase or lower these buttons independently without having to press any function button at all. Right, okay folks, cooking for the chicken is now done. Oh, look at that. I think you can safely say that's cooked. Now, normally, folks, you get a thermometer to put it in there. Do you want to just stick the uh, knife through there, shall you? Near the bony part and in the fleshy part. 
juices are running and the clear. juices are running out clear folks that is absolutely superb so we're going to put that chicken on a separate plate now and you will notice that we haven't had to turn that over just show us the other side of the chicken shell both sides of the chicken are cooked folks and that is the beauty of that lower element you can see there so crispy skin absolutely superb look at that look and we're not going to wash that out we're going to utilize the oil that's in there because we're going to be cooking our roasted vegetables in there now so Sharon, just going to put some olive oil over the top of the veg and just give them a good coating folks if you want all them vegetables coated in that very good these have not been cooked or nothing very not... good olive oil totally raw <coughs> yeah right okay baby so we're going to put them straight in there and we're just going to give them a coat of sea salt yeah tracy's got this in there so this is her the old sea salt, just put plenty Himalayan. on folks, put plenty on, there you go, so there we go, there's our veggies in, let's put that in there now, and let's turn the air fryer on again, and we're going to go for the roast function on these, because we want these roasted, these vegetables, and hit the old uh, play button. So this wasn't part of the, the uh, meal, budget no. meal, but we're going to do it because we just want to show something else in the kasori cooking, don't we? Yeah. And one of the things it does very well is... Yorkshire puddings. Yorkshire puddings. So, here we've got two eggs. They come up to that level in the glass. We've got exactly the same glass here. We've got some plain flour. That comes up to exactly the same level in the glass. So we're gonna tip the flour in the... In our jar. Milk, and then we're gonna put the same amount of milk now in. Right, so, so everything measures up to the, the level of the eggs, folks. And there's only the three ingredients. So keep going, baby. Keep going, bit more, bit more. That'll do you there. So as you can see, we've had three glasses. One with two eggs in, the milk is the same level as the eggs and the flour is the same level as the eggs, folks. So all that goes into one container. And all Sharon's gonna do now is use our balloon whisk and bring all that together and that is our Yorkshire pudding batter. And that will be absolutely fantastic. Right, so there you go, there's our lovely batter mixed up, folks. And Sharon's just putting a little bit of salt in there just to help with the flavor of the batter. And as you can see, no lumps, it comes, comes together very, very easily, this batter, and it always works first time. And it's surprising, Sharon, that that batter comes together when using plain flour. Oh, no. you, you think they'd use self-raising flour. Oh, no. it's weird, isn't it? But every time you do it in the air fryer, this mixture, I guarantee you folks, your Yorkshire pudding will rise, believe me. You'll see that in a minute. So we're nearly at the end of the cooking for the vegetables, and then we'll come back to you and put the Yorkshire pudding in and see how that turns out in the dual glaze uh, kasori. Right, so we're nearly at the finish of the first cooking segment, folks. So let's open them and have a little look, baby. These aren't going to be done yet. Yeah, they're not going to be done yet. But as you can see, they've started to roast up now, folks. Because remember, these went in raw. Yep. So we just give them a good toss around. Make sure all that coating is, uh, the oil is all over them. And then we're going to put them in for another... We'll go another 15 minutes. Right, so they've gone back on, folks, for another 15 minutes. And then they should be good to go. Right, okay, folks. We're just draining the juices off of the chicken now. Because you're going to be using that, Sharon, aren't you? Yeah, put in my gravy. Make in the gravy. We've only got a couple of minutes to go on the veg, so we're going to be taking that out very, very shortly. That will go on this plate as well and get reserved for it. And then we'll heat up this silicone uh, bowl there. That's that one we had earlier on, that eight inch one. No, seven inch one, wasn't yeah. it? So coming down now, 44 seconds to go. Very nearly there. This does operate at a maximum of 205 degrees centigrade, folks, for those of you who want to know. Some air fryers go a lot hotter, but realistically, you don't really need to cook above 205, no. do you? No. So uh, bearing in mind, you've got both elements on this one. And it's like a double, isn't it? It's like a double, yeah. it's a double oven. As I say, theory. the only time you would want to use the broil function, uh, that would have been better if it said the word grill on it, but that obviously aimed at the American market. Broil just uses the top element, if you want to know that, mm. folks, as I said earlier on. Right, so look, we'll have a look, 10 seconds to go, folks. Counting down with us on the Kasori Dual Blaze, 6.4 litre air fryer. There we go, so let's just have a look inside here. Oh, look at them, for, oh, look, Sharon, oh, look at them. Are they or are they not roasted, folks? Come on, give your, give your honest opinion there. Them roast potatoes look absolutely fantastic, and so do the roasted carrots. And you can see the importance of actually putting plenty of oil on them, because that's what gives you that lovely, crispy surface on them potatoes. So they look absolutely f fantastic. Now don't forget, if you was doing this in the oven, folks, you would double your cooking time. So not only are you cooking it quicker, you're cooking it also cheaper on this and only 1700 watts 
compared to a normal oven, which would have a perhaps two and a half kilowatt heating elements. What I could have done was maybe put some stuff in with the chicken as well. I could have done that. Yeah, there was there more was room, room in there. Yeah. Right, so, so we're just going to drop our seven inch lightly oiled silicone container. We normally use tins in ours, but um, so we're just going to put it on air fryer and we're just going to raise the temperature up to the maximum. We're not preheating here, folks. We're literally putting this on so that oil in that silicone tray starts to get hot. So that's the reason why we're putting it on again. And after that, we'll pour that batter in and then we'll start cooking that. This is a little extra which we're doing for the kids. This ain't involved in the price. This will be extra. This is stuff that you'd most probably have in your cupboards, a bit of flour, egg and milk anyway. Yeah, Everyone flour, has that egg and milk, that's all it is. In your household cupboards. Right, so the air fryer's been on for another two minutes, folks. So we're going to just open the tray up and we're just going to pour that batter into the silicone tray, put it on, and that's going on for... 205 for 13 minutes folks that is on the air fryer setting so we'll let that go and then we'll come back to you when that's done right we've only got three minutes left folks for the yorkshire pudding so we've just put the veg on we're just going to drain the veg now and we're going to use the cooking liquor water just to help make a bit of gravy we had that in the lard or the pantry anyway folks so um we haven't we haven't factored in that as a cost because we naturally assume that you'd probably have that already there we go just let that drain off Make sure that drains off fully, let's give that a good shake. And we just let that sit on top of the uh, saucepan just so it can steam itself there. And as you can see there folks, that chicken looks absolutely lovely. The roast potatoes, the roasted carrots all look fantastic. All cooked in the Kasori Jewel Blaze. So we're just going to put the veg on the plate now. And I'm pleased to say my grandchildren absolutely love their vegetables, these three. There we go. Right, so here we go folks, we're all dished up, we're waiting for the little added extra of the um, Yorkshire pudding done in the Kasori Jewel Blaze. Just finished. Wow, look at that. Look at the size of that, that's risen absolutely fantastic It's folks. a whopper. Look at that, so we're going to get this out, we'll just put it on that plate and then we'll dress the gravy. Oh look Sharon, look. That is cooked to perfection folks, look at that, look. Let's lift it up, look. Look, oh, look at that, cooked top and bottom, no liquid bits in there, no runny bits in there. It will sink, but that's the nature of the beast. And there we go, that has done a fantastic job there of cooking these three dinners here, folks, for the kids. And let's just put some gravy on it. Go on in, off you go. So just wet the gravy. Oh, look at that, Sharon. Oh, you can't superb. Grab this. £1.12. You yep. couldn't get that in a restaurant for £1.12. £1.12 per meal, folks. That's not including the gravy granules and also the Yorkshire pudding. But even if you said take the price up to £1.30, for example, for them little extra bits, that is absolutely a triumph there. Marvellous. Let's have a closer look, folks. So we're just going to use this pair of scissors, folks, if you want to cut the uh, Yorkshire pudding up. It makes life a hell of a lot easier. There we go. There's one. Don't forget, this was a little bonus buy. There we go. We'll just place that on the uh, plates, folks. There we go. Look at that. Look, a little Sunday roast for free. Well, you could... Adults will eat that, shall Oh, yeah. He's... Look at that, folks. How does that look to you? Absolutely superb. Look at that. Three steaming roast dinners. The roast carrots, the roast potatoes are cooked to perfection there, as you can see. And also the Yorkshire pudding and also that lovely piece of chicken there on all them plates, absolutely superb. So there you go, folks. That is the Kasori Jewel Blaze. Uh, you've had this now for about seven months, seven or eight months? Yeah, about that. How yeah. have you found it? Lovely. You don't actually use your main cooker anymore, do you? Apart from obviously the hob. All your cooking's done at Workshop Hype in this dual elemented 1,700 watt Jewel Blaze air fryer. Are you happy with it? There you go, folks. Don't forget, I will leave a link in the description below this video. You can cook a hell of a lot more, but just to show you the sort of thing you can cook. £1.12 each, people. With the money you've saved, if you shop wisely, you can buy yourself one of these. So don't forget, check the link out below this video, mm. and uh, I think you'll thoroughly enjoy the Kasori Jewel Blaze, like I you are. you will. Thanks very much, folks. We'll see you in the next video, and until then, bye, bye for now. now. Bye.